I'm going to move my bees on this video. So I'm going to start digging and make a new level spot here. I'm going to move them a little bit over this way. And if I only move them a couple of meters, it's okay because they will figure out how to get back into their hive. But you don't want to move bees more than a few meters away from their hive. They have a GPS. They lock the GPS home base in. They go flying around up to six, seven k's away looking for pollen and nectar. And then they come back to, they follow the GPS. They just press the home button. And if they do that and the hive has been moved, for example, three, four meters over that way, then they'll come back to the GPS point and they fly around and they fly around and they can't find out where their home base is because they don't have that intelligence to look around and say, oh, there it is. That's not how they work. So if you want to move a beehive further away than just a couple of meters, then you have to move it either just a couple of meters each day, or if you want to move them further away than just a couple of meters, you have to, at nighttime, close the hive with some uh, like steel wool, just put some steel wool in the entrance so they all stay in, pack it up, move it away it has to be at least five six seven kilometers away and then just open it up they'll realize they're in a new spot they'll make a new home base in their gps because the queen is with them and they'll they'll be fine on this episode peter's going to help me split my hive and move my hive we're gonna we're gonna start by splitting the hive again and we've got the hive here this is the one we're gonna move half the bees into so you're not going to wear gloves? No. We'll see how we go. I don't like it. <laughs> no, I don't like wearing gloves for anything really, but I kind of don't like getting stung on the hands either. Yeah. We'll see how we go. So I'll go in this side first and we'll just move them with a little bit of smoke. Yeah. Just drives them down, out of the way. Yeah. Then I take the J-hook end of my hive tool yeah. and put it down in this gap and I can lever off the next frame along just to pull that out because the bees stick everything together really well with lots of propolis. Propolis is a tree resin that they bring back from multiple different trees. So this side frame, I expect it to be honey and pollen. That's usually what it is. They usually put the honey and the pollen on the outside of the box and save the brood for the middle. Right. And you can see this pollen in here, it's been fermented by the bees and transformed into something we call bee bread. They feed that to their young larvae. <laughs> down here is capped honey so we don't need to put this in our split we just keep it in this hive we'll put it aside for now all right we always have a look for the, the queen on the frames but she's usually not out on the sides so what we're seeing here is more pollen up in this corner so that's their protein food honey down in this corner which is their carbohydrate food and all of this very yellow capping is brood. It's actually pupating bees coming from the larva stage to adult bee stage. And they'll emerge and pop out and start doing duties in the hive. So what we're looking for in our split is actually capped brood, open brood, meaning larva and eggs, and some pollen and honey. So this is actually a perfect frame for our split. We want this capped larvae to hatch out or emerge fairly soon and boost the numbers in the split box. Mm. So we're always looking for the queen in here on these frames because we want to keep her in our parent colony. Mm. And I can't see her anywhere. But just because you don't see her doesn't mean she's not there. <laughs> but anyway, we'll put this in the split. to the next frame. It's incredible it's how... I've got my first sting there. Yeah. You can see the bee can't get her stinger out. She's actually pulling and pulling and going around and around and around in circles. She's got a barb on that stinger. And I can scrape it out like that. And she, she can fly away. Oh, so she keeps the stinger? Yeah, if I scrape it out like that. A little bit too easy. That's okay. So what do we got in here? I just need the sun in there. I might turn around. A good way to find open brood is to get the sun over your shoulder and into the cells. So I can see, once the sun is correct for me, I can see all these 
very young larvae. Or larva. They're about to be capped as well. They're about to pupate. They spin a little cocoon around themselves in the cell. Yeah. Bees cap them off. Yeah. And the whole body turns to mush and they re... Like a caterpillar into a butterfly. Yeah. I'm just hurling her there, she is there. Okay. Try. Oh yeah, there she is. Got her. Just hitting the bottom frame now. Oh, oh there she is. I can see her now. I'll just hurt her over. Yeah. So she doesn't go around the other side. Young bees that have just emerged from the cell they stay inside for three weeks and then when they get older they graduate to becoming field bees so when they're young they don't actually know where they live they just stay in the cones so we can shake them in and they'll stay okay we can't tell the difference between them by eye but we know that some of them will stay in the box and some of them will return we want to get as many in the box as we can see a lot of nectar in these cells yeah so when you when you see the fresh nectar like that not capped like this you know that it's coming in right now this is older honey yeah another one emerging here here's one that's just emerged she's really fluffy and cute oh yeah she's just wandering around she's a little bit uncoordinated she's only just popped out of the cell so what I'm doing now I don't need to necessarily check these frames we already found the queen we want to make sure they've got some uh, larvae in them because that's if the queen goes to the other side then... That's true. They're going for my hands. Thank you. Frame in. Yeah. That we pulled out the very first frame. When you put it down, you're not sitting it on top of any bees? No, I'm just wiggling it around a little bit. Sometimes you do. It's pretty hard to avoid squashing bees. Yeah. You know, there's the whole thing, oh, don't squash any because they've got that pheromone that tells them to sting. And that's very true, but it's impossible to avoid yeah. squashing some. So. Yeah. That's a cool shot there. They're festooning. Mm -hmm. They hold on to each other. So that's how when, they, when they're, um, when they're um, swarming in the tree, that's how they hang on to yeah. make the ball? Yep, that's right. It's also the way they draw wax. They pass wax to each other like that. But that's, that's not what they're doing now. Just because I pulled the frame apart that they're hanging on like that. Mm. So we put our blank frames in to replace the ones we split from. And because this is a strong colony and it's spring, we can do what's called checkerboarding. Our aim here is to slow this hive down so that they don't swarm. Because their population and the amount of nectar and pollen that they're bringing in once that kind of gets overloaded, it triggers, triggers the swarming response, which is the natural behavior, the way they reproduce the super organism. But because it's so much, because it's spring, there's so much resources for them. They're a busy hive. We can split their brood nest up so we can make blank frames between the brood nest. It'll encourage them to draw the wax quicker. But in our split, we'll keep the brood nest together because they're a small colony and we want to give them every chance to get back on their feet. Two, four, six, eight. Yep. And so we'll smoke all the bees out of these gaps here so we don't squash them. We put the frames together and then into the center of the box and pull together. Perfect. And we can sort of clean up a little bit here. While we're going, you don't really have to clean up, they'll just build it again, but you know, it can help. And um, here's the spot where you crop you can't yeah. avoid squashing bees. It's just putting that on. You don't clean that up, you can't really. No. I mean, you sort of can, but no it's reason to. Really difficult, really difficult to do. You can scrape it off, but it's takes forever, your hive tool gets stuck in it. Yeah. So I don't ever bother. No worries. Um, the metal ones are good. If you want to get a metal one, they're easy to clean. You can scrape them off, then get a blowtorch or whatever. We may need to clean these up. 
that'll help us. So some people are saying that these um, plastic uh, hides things are no good for the bees. So the bees coat everything with wax. So they coat everything with wax anyway. So actually all the cells that they're putting honey in, they've already coated with their own wax. Oh, nice to know. Um, the other thing is that commercial beekeepers use plastic extensively. So they'll use plastic boxes, they use plastic frames in the brood box, they use plastic frames in the honey extraction box. I mean, in their honey supers, yeah. which they then extract. Um, then they put their honey in plastic and that's what you buy off the shelf. So yeah. it doesn't really fly. No. Um, these flow frames are made from highest quality food grade plastic and um, that, that flow could find. Mm. It, was, it was a big, big mission to source all that. So, mm. um, Well done. They'll sit up in the front of the hive like that for you know, most of the rest of the day. Don't, yeah. These guys will eventually crawl in. Yeah. These guys will figure it out down here. We sort of trod on this wax a bit. Oh, I did, didn't I? No, just chuck it all. I don't want that. It's all mixed up with yeah, stuff. So all, chuck that. It's a good fire starter, actually. Is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess it is. Get your hand under here is usually the easiest one. Yeah, just right on the bottom, yeah? Yep. Yeah, one, two, three. So we just gotta level it out now. Still needs to go down at the front a bit more. This one's the culprit here. Yeah, I think we're good. Nice. And then we carry that one down. Yep. yep. Okay, I'm gonna take my gloves on. So we're gonna take this one down the back now. Or down the front to its new 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 place. We're just gonna get on each side like this, are we? Same again. Yep. Okay. Right there. Yeah. Okay. You just go either side of the pineapple, yeah. Cool. There we go. There it is. All right, that's better. I reckon these bees are going to be really, really happy here. You know why? Why is that? Because they've got a perfect view. Look at that. Until my food forest grows up a bit higher. Go back on. Yeah. Woo! Nice one. So All right. You'll have to go and have a look in here for queen cells. Look in a week and you'll find I'll... Um, yeah, I know what they look like. They're longer. They look like cool. yeah. yeah. In a week. Yeah and just make sure they're in there. Yeah. And if they're not, you might need to get some eggs back out from that parent colony and boost it up with that and go again. Okay. All right, man. Thanks very much for coming yeah, out. No worries. My pleasure. Okay. The story doesn't stop there because after Peter left, I waited a week and I went and checked the other hive down the back to see if there was some queen cells that had been developed, but I couldn't find any. So I came back to this hive and I took two more cells with eggs and larvae and move them back down to the other hive and wait another week but still nothing no sign of queen cell so i called peter again and asked peter to come out with a new queen which he did and when we opened the hive up down the back we saw the queen so we have two queens one in this hive and one in the other hive and both are producing honey and both are healthy the worker bees only have a lifespan of six weeks when they emerge from the cell they spend the first three weeks in the hive doing jobs in the hive like dehydrating honey and um, building comb and things like that and when they're three weeks old then they become forager bees and leave the hive to forage so all the bees that we shook off in the other hive that we took down they were the young bees that are only three weeks like under three weeks old so they'll stay in the hive and any forager bees that came with those frames they'll fly out and fly back to this hive at night time it's very important to know that it's not a good time to split your hive at this time of year in Australia as we're going into winter the best time to split your hive is in the spring in the early summer when there's lots of nectar lots of flowers lots of um, lots of foraging going on and lots of activity in the hive <sighs> so when the queen does emerge she'll spend about 
a week or so getting her wings hardened inside the hive and when her wings are ready to fly she'll leave the hive and she'll fly up in the sky and all the drones will follow her and mate with her and that'll be enough mating to last her the rest of her life whereas all the other bees only live for about six weeks the queen she will live for about five years and she'll produce about 2,000 eggs a day so thanks for watching everybody it wasn't the big cinematic experience as it is often on my videos but as you can appreciate it's very very difficult to film and work with the bees with the big bee suit on until next time enjoy your bees if you have them but otherwise enjoy your lives and your gardens have a nice day and i'll catch you later